Cisco Identity Services Engine 802.1x and Azure AD using ROPC. ICE REST ID functionality is based on a new service introduced in ICE 3.0, REST Auth Service. This service is responsible for communication with Azure AD over open authorization, ROPC exchanges in order to perform user auth and group retrieval. All right, let's get started. We're gonna jump into Azure Active Directory. We're gonna go ahead and register an application. This is gonna be used to connect to Identity Services Engine. So we're gonna go new registration. We're gonna give it a name and we're gonna use a single tenant. Now there's some restrictions to ROPC. First off, it uses ETTLS, um, but you can't use multi-factor authentication. I think that's still true. So you wanna make sure that you understand the restrictions before you move forward. Remember, this is for 802.1x. We wanna copy off the client ID or tenant ID. We can come back and get this later, so don't worry. We're gonna go ahead to authentication. We're gonna allow public client flows and we're gonna hit yes here. That's it on this page. Successfully saved. All right, let's move on. Let's go to client or sorry, certificates and secrets, we're gonna create a new client secret. Now this one we need to copy um, because you can't come back in here later to grab it. So go ahead and make a copy of it once we create it here and store it somewhere um, so we can enter it in, in, into Identity Services Engine later. Go ahead and, and set the expiry date. This is a lab environment, so I'm gonna go 12 months. Obviously, based on your security profile in your organization, you may want to restrict it. Here's another just warning to grab that value of the um, secret key and store it because we're going to need it later. All right, token configuration. So go ahead and we're going to add a group's claim here. And it's going to be for security groups. And we're going to leverage ID, Access, and SAML. So all three token uh, types. And um, let's go ahead and just drop these down. And you can see here, group ID. So we'll leave it as the default. But you can see SAM account name, NetBIOS, domain name, DNS domain, on-premise group security identifier. And again, access very much the same thing. And same with SAML. Again, we don't need to change anything here. All we needed to do was add security groups. And that's saved. All right, we're plowing along. API permissions. So user read is the default. We're gonna go ahead and add a permission again for Microsoft's Graph API. And we're going to go to application permissions and we're going to look for group. And let's drop that down. Select group and we want group read all. So group, um, this read all group. So add that permission. And it says not granted. And so we want to grant consent. So go ahead and do that. That should turn green. Everything looks good. All right. Let's see here. I think that covers everything um, on the application side. Let's go back and you know what? I try to really start these clean. And so, you know, I don't even have groups created here. So we're gonna use three groups um, for 802.1x. We're gonna use sales, HR, and IT. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the groups here on the fly as we go along. Pretty simple stuff here. Go ahead and create each of our groups. And then I even I don't have any users either. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and create the users or users for this use case, I should say. So create a user. I'm only gonna create one user. Um, you get the idea if you haven't done it before. 
we'll generate a um, password and now we'll assign the groups here. So again, we're gonna do a sales one, IT one, and an HR one. We'll assign it to groups. We'll go ahead and obviously you can fill in this additional information. This is a lab environment and go ahead and um, continue that process for IT one and HR one. I'm not gonna show you that. I'm sure you don't wanna sit through it. Now, the other thing you have to do is you have to at least log in once. Um, if you don't, you're gonna get prompted to change the password and that's gonna be an issue. The other thing too is it asks you here, uh, when you log in at least into the Azure uh, portal, it's gonna ask you to uh, use MFA. So MFA, if enabled, is not going to work. So go ahead and log in once uh, to, with your application. It's probably not uh, an issue in a production environment. Now we're jumping back into ICE. So first thing we need to do is enable the that service. So that REST ID service, we need to um, go ahead and enable. So let's just check here. Again, I like to show from scratch as much as possible. You can see here the REST auth service is disabled. So let's go ahead and enable it. Go to administration. We're gonna to go to settings under identity management and then rest ID store settings. Go ahead and click that and then we'll go ahead and enable it. We'll save it up. There's a message up here to say only the following use cases were tested and that's eat TTLS with PAP. Um, it does talk about um, this should be thoroughly tested. It's a controlled introduction feature. I am using 3.1, not 3.0, so this was introduced in 3.0. And there's a reason why I went to 3.1, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So you can see the service has started, we're good to go. We can now start building this out. So I've jumped to external identities into ROPC. I'm gonna add the client ID, tenant ID, and secret uh, information here. So we'll go ahead and do that. So again, you just go to external identities, the rest ROPC on the left side, put in your client ID, tenant ID, and secret ID, um, and then you can go ahead and test it out as well. Now, before I do that, the one thing that it did call out for, at least I believe it called out for, was adding the UPN. And so, that's the user principal name. You can see it here. I'm gonna grab it and I did end it, I, I did add it here. And what that does is saves the user from putting it in. I couldn't get it to work. Um, so I came back in here and I removed it. And um, and sure enough, if I put in the full UPN, it works. So um, again, you, you decide what's best for you. you test it out in your environment. It could have been something quirky in my environment for sure. So here we're gonna add the groups. So we've got the connection, we test the connection, we can connect to Azure AD, we add sales, HR, and IT. And now we have these groups and available for adding to policy. So that's it for the integration. Now we've got full integration between Azure AD and um, Identity Services Engine. The other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a condition. Now you don't necessarily have to do this. Say if AD or Azure AD is what you're using and only what you're using, then you probably don't need this. But in many cases, you're probably gonna have a mix. And so I have built it in the manner of which that I can have um, EPTTLS use Azure AD, and then any other uh, protocol being used is going to use um, uh, the Active Directory that we have on premise. So that's already pre-configured the Active Directory part, but I need a um, condition that looks for EPTTLS. All right, I got this policy here at the top wireless. That's the one we're gonna test with. And you can see I've already got some authentication policies and that's tied to Active Directory. And, um, and then a final deny. So what I'm gonna do is insert this above and I'm gonna put a condition here that says that if it's TTLS, I wanna use Azure AD. And then if it doesn't match that, it goes to the next policy, which is gonna hit um, Active Directory. And if it doesn't hit that, then it, it goes to deny access. And that, that way now I can use both. Now the supplicant's gonna dictate what it's going to use. So I'm good there. Now we'll go, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna grab device type. I'm gonna use um, wireless, although we've used it already in both. I'm gonna use it here too. 
Um, and then I'm going to add another condition, and that other condition is going to be the uh, eat TTLS condition. So let's scroll down and go to uh, eat tunnel, and then we'll select the uh, eat TTLS that we just created, and we'll go ahead and use that in policy. So that's our authentication policy, and we're going to change this to that Cisco Security Azure AD, and that's the name I called it. Um, and so that bubble might have hid, hidden that, but you give it a name when you add the identity source, you give it whatever name you want. That's the name I created. Now you can see I've got a bunch of um, authorization uh, policies already in place. So, and that's to do with my Active Directory environment. So what I'm gonna do is I, I'm actually gonna copy this and I'm going to add uh, a, a little bit more of an identifier here. I'm gonna call it AAD for Azure AD and I'm gonna use that as HR. And then the only condition here I really need to change is point to my um, Azure AD external group and then select HR in this case. And we'll go ahead and use that and that's it. That's all we had to do. And now I'll duplicate that and I'll modify it for IT and um, the sales users. Go ahead into the condition, drop that down, grab IT, and use that. Go ahead and duplicate above. You can see how pretty quick it is. Sales. Go ahead and modify. And again, you can use this for wired and wireless. Um, you can use these conditions in VPN. Lots of different options here. Okay, so we've got our 802.1x Azure AD. And what I'm gonna do just for uh, my environment, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put AD in front of um, each one of these users just so I can see you know, when I'm looking at logs and policy, I can clearly see what which one's Azure AD and which one's AD. I mean, you can see that by the groups anyway, um, but uh, an external identity, but I'm gonna add that as well, quick, easy visual. Save that out. And look at that, we're in 12 minutes. We've got integration with Azure AD. We've got our policy built. We had some conditions we created. We registered an application within Azure and now we're at live logs and we're already to test. So let's go ahead and jump into an endpoint that has wireless. And the one thing, I'm not pushing a supplicant here, so I'm gonna create one. If not, it, Windows doesn't give you an option um, to choose what uh, protocol uh, without coming in here and doing this. So you're probably gonna use a, a, a supplicant and push it out to the right users. Um, and so you're gonna select eat TTLS and you're gonna use path. We're gonna go ahead and look for that. There we go, I've got one um, specific to Azure AD and I'm gonna sign in. Sales one at Cisco Security Guru. Dot on Microsoft.com. So that's where I'm adding the UPN. So if we can get away from that, mo most likely this is going to be a user's machine. They're going to connect to it and they're not going to have to do that. But um, if you can save that uh, or add that UPN, um, you, you might want to do that just for user experience. So now it's connecting, it's checking, it's, it's doing all the stuff wireless does um, and I've authenticated. Now it says no internet access and that's just because I put it into a, a network that doesn't have internet access. But that doesn't matter. You can see here, I've got the IP address and there's that EAP TTLS um, that we leveraged. And if I come into my live logs, I can see um, there's certainly some activity here and there's my username. I can see that it hit the right policy, Guru security guru AAD, and then the right uh, authorization uh, policy and permit access. And I can see here there's the EAP TTLS, a lot of good information logged here. Again, there's the identity store, that makes sense, that's what we called it. I know you didn't see it, but that's that's the name of it. EAP TTLS there again, scroll down, you can see lots of good information, but we're, 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 we've logged in, everything's working, fantastic. 
Now let's go over to Azure and what I'm going to do is look in sign in logs real quick. And you can see here sales one and look at the application ice rest AAD. We'll go ahead and um, look at some of the basic info that's included here. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Okay, so let's real, let's quickly test this. Now, normally you're not gonna have two SSIDs for this, but I did this because, again, I'm not pushing the supplicant out to specific users. But 802.1x AD, I'm just gonna log into sales one. And I'm gonna connect. And this one does have an IP that does have access to um, the internet. Come on, Windows. This is all on virtual uh, uh, platform, so it's just on an Intel NUC, very small um, box running Identity Services Engine, VM, um, uh, a VM of, uh, of Windows Workstation, and, and some other VMs as well. There's Sales One. There's Active Directory. So we did it. We were able, and it's using um, Peep MS uh, Chat Version Two as opposed to EAP TTLS. So again, you can determine that by how that user connects using the 802.1x protocols and determine what identity source that uh, you want to leverage in that use case. So pretty cool stuff. That's what the Jure AD baby steps.